just disclosure, I'm telling you about something that I've always wanted to do and that I think we should do, but it's not, not really something that I'm doing. But in my wayward youth, here I am at, at age 18, uh, I did sort of run away to sea. My uh, role model was Richard Henry Dana, who came out here and I'm speaking as if we are in uh, the Bay Area together, which we, which we should be. So Richard Henry Dana came out almost 200 years ago. Uh, he was a Harvard student and he's, he started to lose his eyesight and he was told to, to take a vacation at sea. They meant for him to like go on a luxury cruise, but he instead signed on as a merchant seaman. And so before the mast means, you know, it, with the crew. And so he took the side of the crew and, and so the, if it was any way he could, he could uh, pay that back to them, he, he would. And he, and he did that by writing a book called The Seaman's Friend, which was which he then came back to Harvard and became a lawyer. So this book was not only a manual of, of seamanship and how to run all the sails, it was a legal manual of what your rights were as one of these sort of enslaved uh, sailors. So, so the ship at that time was, it was an amazing sort of synthesis of the highest technology at the time. And that's what I want to tell you about. That, uh, you know, our CO2 problem really, it, it, the problem and the solution are the same. The chemical energy belongs in the diet of organisms, not machines. The Earth's atmosphere converts solar radiation into gravitational energy available as water power, momentum available as wind. We capture a significant fraction of the hydroelectric power and insignificant fraction of the wind. Most of that wind is at sea. The background energy flux at Earth's distance from the sun is about one kilowatt per square meter, diminishing to a fraction of this at the surface returning to about a kilowatt in a 25 mile an hour wind. Even 19th century sailing ships achieved 60% efficiency at translating this momentum directly into the movement of goods. 90% of global transport is still conveyed by sea. So in that time, in the age of sail, clipper ships with names like Comet, Flying Cloud, Lightning, Nightingale, Staghound, Sweepstakes, Witch of the Wave broke records that still stand today. Sailing ships competed successfully with steamships for decades, losing out over scheduling and labor costs, not speed. And under trade wind conditions, sails capture far more power than is required to drive the ship. Hybrid vessels with feathering propeller impellers can store this surplus to transit areas of light or unfavorable wind. The required mass in batteries or better flywheels carries a negligible penalty at sea, unlike on land. Trade routes in the age of sail were like a series of M.C. Escher staircases, always flowing downhill. It costs roughly 60 cents a pound to build a container ship and $600 a pound to build an airliner. 21st century clipper ships would fall somewhere in between. The value added would be the ship via sail pedigree and zero carbon footprint attached to the transported goods. The shipping network would, collectively, would be collectively aware of all vessel states, weather and cargo demand, for most supply chains, knowing where your shipment is and when it will arrive is actually more important than speed. Flywheel power, which is what I'm in favor of, stores momentum without conversion losses, scales up better than it scales down. Think of these vessels as free ranging storage batteries, redistributing energy across space and time. At full build out, the system constitutes an asynchronous planetary wind turbine. The ships or blades circulating on the surface of a spherical hydraulic bearing, tracing an optimum path between the demand for transport and the supply of wind. So this is a chart from the Royal Navy that uh, shows the, the sailing routes from the age of sail that are still there today. It's, it's a planetary system that we can easily take advantage of using ab you know, completely existing technology uh, the Admiralty must know something. Wait, we don't because they've kept this book in print. It's still in print. Those routes are there. And I think in the, hopefully in the not too distant future, some of our uh, uh, benefactors will stop building yachts and start, start building working vessels, which is uh, what I would like to see happen. Thank you. And, it's, it's, and all these engravings came from Captain Cook's third voyage that you saw running along the bottom of the screen.